This is basically going to be a masterclass on exactly how to practice, but sent in by one of our viewers. A while ago, I put out a video sort of demonstrating this practice analysis sort of style of video that I wanted to do where you guys send in a video of you practicing and then I give you feedback. And I'm so excited. This was absolutely perfect timing. I got our very first uh, video sent in for a practice analysis. It was sent in by Neva. Thank you so much for sending this in. Uh, it's a really, really good practice session and I'm really excited to break it down. And I think a lot of people can learn a lot from the way that Neva is practicing, and I'll also give a couple ideas on how we can make it even better. And if you find this interesting and think it would be beneficial for you to submit a practice analysis for me to review on the channel, then look at the directions in the description of this video for instructions on how to do that. All right, let's get right into the video. I'm so excited for you all to see all of the great things that Neva is doing in her practice. Scale in thirds, uh, 16th notes, at 90, starting out. Okay, so what do you think is the first thing that I would say about this? And if you're not sure, Neva will tell us the answer. Okay, obviously I need to slow down. Let me try 80. That's exactly right. Whenever anything is uncomfortable or it's hard to do it steady or smoothly, just go slower. Uh, whenever things aren't working well, we have to simplify it somehow so that we can do it well. Whenever we're practicing, we want to be doing things as best as we possibly can in terms of being smooth and steady with great sound and great control. So this is exactly the right idea to just slow it down if it's really uncomfortable and the notes and patterns are unfamiliar. Probably still too fast. Take it down to 70. Yeah, and this is great. There's really absolutely no shame in going slower and slower. Um, I once had a teacher in high school, actually, who said that you should practice things just like absolutely like stupid slow. And I think that's really accurate, actually. Just go as slow as you need to, slow enough that it seems like this is dumb to be going this slow, where you're like, I can play these notes so easily, so effortlessly. But if you can do the notes effortlessly, then that frees up your mind to really be thinking about how the clarinet playing should go and also allows you to really get it into your brain because it's easy and your brain knows what it's doing and that just strengthens that pathway of doing it exactly perfectly. You wanna go slow enough that it's effortless and perfect. 60. So I started at 90 and I'm down to 60. I probably can do 60, but there's some finger flubbing happening, so I'm going to leave 60, come back to that, and just do some finger changes between notes. And this is another absolutely brilliant idea. This is basically another way to simplify. So she started at 90 and that was just really uncomfortable, really unfamiliar, and now has dialed it back down to 60, which is fantastic. Um, and now we're simplifying in another way where we're gonna isolate some intervals, focus on some different um, note changes, and really isolate those and, and improve those. <laughs> So 
this is one spot where there might be a little bit of a mistake that was made here by not continuing with the metronome. I think it's okay to practice stuff sometimes without the metronome and sort of go through it like this where you're not worried about the timing and, and playing precisely with the metronome. Um, but I think what would be even better to do is to do just a small chunk with the metronome. So say there's one particular note grouping or, or pattern or section of notes that's a little bit tricky, keep the metronome going and just do that small section. So rather than doing it without the metronome to simplify it and, and work through the fingerings, continue with the metronome, but just do smaller chunks. <laughs> Okay, so obviously that's a huge problem going from A to C. So I'm just gonna work on this measure. And look at that. When I was watching this video the first time through, um, every thought that I had that I was like, this is how you should be doing it differently, she like said that like 10 seconds later. It was just so awesome to see this. And it, she's really doing an excellent job of, of how to practice. And that's why I said this is really gonna be just her giving this master class of exactly what you should be doing on, on your practice. And I'm going to go slower than the 60. I'm going to go 50. One E and a two E and a... This is another really good method for simplifying things, actually counting through the rhythm. The one thing to be careful of with this is to just to make sure that when you do count with the rhythm, it's very intentional and you're really lining up with the metronome. I suspect the reason why she did this is because it didn't feel quite comfortable. She wasn't quite sure exactly what 16th notes were at 50 beats per minute, which is totally fine to do, um, especially as you get into the slower tempos. Um, those 16th note subdivisions really take up more space than you may think at the slower tempos. One thing that you could do is set the metronome to eighth notes or set the metronome to 100. So you'd have one E and a, two E and a, and that might make it a little bit easier to be precise. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. could be using a right finger. I'm going to swap that. How many people noticed that left pinky C and thought that was a little bit odd? I definitely noticed that in the beginning and again she noticed it for herself and you don't even need me. Oh, I did it again with the left finger. So now I'm going to mark this is another Mark really page. great idea. With a R for right hand, but I'm just gonna go between those two notes now. And I just realized I could have my whole right hand down during that whole four notes. And this is the benefit of doing these really small sections. You don't have to spend so much brain power focusing on playing through the whole scale or the whole piece or the whole run, whatever you're working on. And that frees up your brain to notice these other things like, oh, hey, I could just leave the right hand down or do whatever resonance fingering I like to do on the A. Um, or, oh, if I did this different fingering here, this would make it a lot easier or all of those different things that make these passages work a lot better. So this right here, I think was the only thing, if I remember correctly, that uh, she doesn't fix. And here she's doing the left pinky C still for going from C to E. And I actually think the right pinky C would work a lot better here too, because remember the golden rule of fingering is keep all of the motion in one hand if you can. Um, so she already did a good job of noticing um, to use the right pinky C going over the break, but you can just keep that right pinky C for after the D as well, instead of having to coordinate 
the left pinky and the right ring finger, which are two of the weaker fingers on both of the hands, which can be really hard to coordinate. You can just do the right pinky and the right ring finger, and those fingers just like to move together on their own a lot better. That being said, however, I really like how she broke this down. If there was a fingering where you had to coordinate the left hand and the right hand, which does happen occasionally, um, this is exactly how to do it. Just do those two notes at a time. Um, I'm okay with it going this fast. I think it's just really important to point out and notice that as it got faster, the coordination decreased a little bit, which is to be expected, but make sure that you're worrying about the coordination first and foremost before worrying about the speed. So if you're speeding up and notice the coordination getting bad, just go slow again and, and be really picky with yourself to get the quality before you worry about getting any speed. <laughs> kind of the process and it would take a bit but I will do it and even that very last thing that she said is so important and such a good sentiment to have that it would take a little bit but she would do it that's what practicing is all about so just to recap some of the great things that we saw in Neva's practicing the first thing is to realize when things are uncomfortable and unfamiliar and then go slower. You'll also notice that she never really did anything the same twice. There was a couple times where she repeated through a section um, multiple times, but every time it was improving and she was making those subtle adjustments, whether she was saying it out loud or not. But most of the time it was also really nice that she sort of gave some dialogue describing what she wanted to change and, and how she wanted to fix things. And that's that really practical practicing with a purpose that I talk about, where she wasn't just like trying to play through the scale at 90 and just hoping that it would come out and, and go smoothly at some point with enough practice. She was slowing it down, isolating sections, simplifying it by counting, doing just two notes at a time, going at it from all of these different angles. And that's what really irons things out and, and cements it into your brain to really know how these things should go. The one other really big takeaway from this is the idea of just continuing to do that work until it gets there. It may seem really tedious to be like slowing the metronome down constantly, doing all of these different sections repeatedly, but that's the work that really makes you better. Rather than just sort of like going through it and hoping that it fixes itself, really taking it apart, going after these small details. And I know it may not seem like going ti da di da will allow you to eventually do ti da di da di da di da um, or however fast or whatever quality you may be aiming for. But I promise if you do that tedious work, you break it down into those sections, you simplify it so it's confident and comfortable and easy and your brain can have a, an enjoyable time playing it really smoothly, then you will definitely get to that um, progress that you want and be able to speed it up and maintain that confidence and smoothness as you get into the faster tempos. So thank you so much to Neva for submitting this video. Uh, if you're interested in submitting a video, look at the instructions in the description. I have a lot of fun doing these practice analysis videos and I would be ecstatic to do some more. So follow those instructions, send in some practice videos, and I'm looking forward to breaking down your practice techniques and doing some uh, feedback for everybody else to learn from your practice habits. One final thing, if you're still watching, um, this video is just one of sort of this mini practice series that I'm doing, and it was absolutely perfect timing for this first uh, practice analysis submission. So if you're interested in all the other practice videos I've done, of course you can subscribe to the channel because I have at least one more coming next week and maybe a couple more even. Um, but you can also go to www.quickstartclarinet.com practice where you can put in your 
your name and email address to get my download of the ultimate practice guide. And then if you scroll down on that page, you can also see all of the videos that I've done in this sort of mini practice uh, series that I've been doing on the channel. So thank you so much for getting that handout, for subscribing to this channel, for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.